We saw some very exciting announcements regarding Cisco certification at Cisco Live, and I do mean exciting. Uh, this is the first time in well over a decade that I've seen a substantial and measurable improvement over the existing certifications. They really seem to have tapped into what the industry needs, and our team is incredibly excited about it. So I want to give you some insight into what the changes really mean for those of you who are sending your folks to get trained or you yourself are getting trained and seeking an associate or professional level certification in the Cisco space. We do see radical changes. You do need to be aware that these changes hit on a very specific date and everything is synchronized for this date, February 24th, 2020. So, in February 2020, we are going to see a very substantial overhaul to the certifications. Let's start with the biggest of the overhauls, and that is the change to the CCNA program. We were expecting a change to the CCNA, but what a lot of people were, uh, let's say, intrigued by is the fact that we have simplified this space. There is one CCNA in our future. So think about what we have in uh, the year 2019 and the years that preceded that. We saw CCNA routing and switching, cloud, security, collaboration, wireless, data center, and there are even more beyond that. We had gotten away from ourselves. Proliferation of too many CCNAs makes it hard for people to focus on the right thing. And so let's unify CCNA. So this is still really centric on the routing and switch version of CCNA, but we do hop into other technologies so that you can jump into another CCNP level that is outside of the routing and switching world. Another big change that we're going to see is that routing and switching goes away. It has a new name. For all intents and purposes, the enterprise CCNP track and also CCIE enterprise is the closest thing to routing and switching. But it's not identical, and here's why. Because the modern Cisco implementations are quite a bit different than the classic routing and switching world. Cisco certainly cut its teeth on routers and then switches, and that's what it used to stake its claim in the industry. But now we're seeing technologies like software-defined networking, automation, and these things are our future for routing and switching, where we're not just typing in direct commands to turn on the network, uh, the protocol for a given interface, we're allowing a more intelligent router to, in some ways, take ownership of the network. This software-defined networking advance and using Python to affect your routers, these are things that we didn't think about 10, 20 years ago. So that is the incremental addition to the enterprise space. And let's look at the other professional level tracks. So collaboration, still things like uh, call managers, contact center, data center, the Nexus product line, the UCS product line, storage area networking with the MDS line. Cisco security, of course, is still uh, present here. Uh, ASAs, firepower, ICE, and then service provider, MPLS, BGP, those sorts of things. So let's drill into what a lot of people are going to be thinking. What does the CCNP look like nowadays? And we're going to expose you to a very interesting approach to how people are going to pursue professional level certifications in Cisco. It works a little bit like how I got my MCSE in the NT 4.0 days where I could take a few key classes and then I choose an elective. That is Cisco's new approach, and it's very exciting. 
because it makes it far more attainable to get a professional level certification so you can get another professional level certification and another or go deeper into the expert space for CCIE. So here's the form that you should expect for the CCNP tracks. There's going to be a core, each of them ends with a core. So for enterprise, we see EN for enterprise core. And you can see the full name explained here. So that is a requirement to get your CCNP, but it alone does not satisfy the needs. So we see the concentration exams, what I'm gonna call electives more often than not, because that's really what they are. So how many electives do you need? Just one. So at first glance, you might have been intimidated by the fact that there are six of these concentration classes and exams that you can choose from, but you need only to choose one of these, which is amazing. It's really great because it makes the certification process for learners and IT professionals very attainable instead of having to go through it like for collaboration, five different classes to get a professional level certification, which is brutal. And certainly people did it, but not at a rate that is really good. We want people to be successful in Cisco and cutting down the fluff is great. And uh, allowing us to get to the summit without it being a massive undertaking. So what are most people gonna do when they're going through the professional level track? Well, they're gonna go through and probably focus on NRC. So in this enterprise track, this is the most equivalent class to the route and switch and even T-shoot classes. But you see cool things like wireless and design here. So with that said, let's now go back and I'm going to drill into the thing you were thinking, really, CCNA, there's only one. So this is also simplified. Previously, we had a bunch of classes. We had ICND1, ICND2, smush them together. That's the CCNA program. We're going to simplify this for you. We have a single CCNA level and a single CCNA class so that people don't do things the wrong way. And yes, we see added information here like automation programmability in the CCNA class. Going back, the professional levels for, let's look at something that's also representative of what I was speaking about. We see a core and then electives. So if you were more focused on the design front, you could choose that elective uh, designing Cisco Data Center infrastructure. And if you think about what this used to be, it used to be at a minimum four different classes to get your data center certification, which is a pretty overwhelming undertaking. And you might only have part of that be relevant to your day-to-day -day life. So let's reflect on what we've seen here. Big changes in terms of making certifications more attainable, reducing choice, at least at the associate level. And you think, okay, well, are they just getting rid of all that training? Well, what's interesting is if we do look, a key class that a lot of people are gonna take, go back to that, uh, and Raymond Lacoste, our lead instructor, for the routing and switching track and future enterprise is authoring the book for this class called NRC. At least that's how we're going to pronounce it. What's interesting is we're seeing a ballooning of the content within each of these classes. And that's something you need to brace yourself for. The classes are expected to grow by 20, 30, 40, and even 50%. That's the heuristic that we have been prepared for for the industry. So these are not easy undertakings. You want to be ready mentally. You want to carve out the requisite amount of time. You want to do the study, the laboratories, be prepared to take practice exams and really chew on 
the marrow of these classes. And it's good for us at Stormwind because one of the things that we're always ready for is adapting to the future of the IT training industry. And here's one of the things that's great about this is we can control how long classes are. The typical instructor-led training class, we're seeing uh, concerns in the industry that it's too much to do in a single week. And we've always understood, hey, not all classes are going to be well delivered in a single week format. So you can expect us to be creative about how we approach the delivery of those classes, spreading it over a two week cycle in some cases so that people can really let the material sink in. Because I, I've been a Cisco student and once upon a time I was sitting the DCIC N class. No, DCUFI. It was the DCUFI class. It was advanced nexus switching and people were cooked on the second and third day and there were only two people who could follow at the pace that the instructor was delivering and the rest of the students out there were really struggling and starting to kind of just attend and go through the motions which is really sad when you think about how much money is spent sending people to that training we want people to really be able to absorb this so in a nutshell massive changes we're going to see 2020 be very exciting in the Cisco space. If you're wondering what a Stormwind is going to be targeting, well, it's pretty much the same and more as what we currently cover. So we're going to cover the enterprise track up to the professional level, the collaboration track, data center. We're actually going to add the service provider track to our portfolio and CCNP security and we're looking to have a big footprint Q1 and rapidly roll out loads of classes and there's no time like the present to really get back into getting Cisco certified.